Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, glad to have you here. Today we're going over set number 75379. This is the relatively brand new R2-D2 set that just came out about a month ago in 2024. It has 1,050 pieces and retails for $100. Um, I don't know if every location has this deal going on, but right now at Costco, if you're seeing this video relatively soon in its uploading... Uh, Costco has this set for $80, and that's actually a very pretty good deal. Um, I made an Instagram video about it the other day when I picked this set up. Um, it, so honestly, if you don't have a Costco membership and you've got one in your local area, I would suggest picking one up because, you know, the entire reason why I have my Costco membership is to get pretty good deals on Lego. Uh, they don't always have them, but when they do, you save yourself, you know, 15 to 20 bucks, depending on the size of the set. Um, so this is one of the many Lego R2-D2s that we've had over the years, and when this was first announced, I was like, oh yeah, another, another R2, and I think that's part of the reason why they gave us a brand new minifigure that we've never had before. We're going to start off just talking about Darth Malak right here. So this is one of the 25 years of Lego Star Wars uh, sets. And in every time they've got those anniversary edition sets, they always give you something special to go along with it, which typically is a minifigure that has nothing to do with the actual set. He's a little dirty. And this set gives us the very first Darth Malak figure we've ever had. And he's got a really nice printed torso. And here's his head. If I can get this off here. Come on. So, if you have played Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, you'll recognize this character. He's, so here's the back of his head. He's got his tattoos and stuff. like. So you'll recognize this character. And they even included the fact that he's... Oh, almost dropped him. He's missing his lower jaw, and he's got like a vocoder thing to re replace his vocal cords. That's a nice detail. So, you got his little, uh, little face mask thing here. So, this is a pretty good minifigure. And if you go on to Bricklink, like I said, this is a $100 set, but if you go on to Bricklink, you'll find a whole bunch of listings of this set. Uh, about $47 and up, all listed without this figure. Um, that's a lot of people, they buy the set, they pull out the exclusive figures, and then they just try to pawn the set off. Uh, unfortunately, that's just a reality of LEGO currently. Um, they also had a bunch of sealed listings for this. And they started at like, like $60? And it's a really new set. Like, it's only been out for like a month. And if you see listings so far below just MSRP, like, you can literally just go to the store and get this. And it's $100. I don't understand why people are listing sealed boxes for so much below MSRP for a brand new set that, that honestly kind of, Feels kind of sketchy. Now, if you want to get that for a decent, you know, price, I'm sure the shipping's going to be awful. Um, you know, by all means, do what you want. I'm just saying, to me, seems kind of weird. Um, you know, I don't know any other uh, prices like eBay or Amazon, place like that, because, uh, like I said, it's only been out for like a month. So, generally speaking, you're probably just going to be paying retail for this. And we have no idea how the price is going to be later on down the road. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, the other minifigure. Let's look at the other minifigure. This is a really cute little R2-D2. And this one is actually in five different sets. So, this is basically the standard R2 we're getting for the time being. And he comes with this little brick-built plaque here. And this is actually a printed plaque, which I really do appreciate not having to uh, 
apply a sticker. The only issue is that was sometimes you might end up with some scrapes and stuff. I got a little, I don't know if you can see it, but I got a little scratch right there. Um, so depending on how much these boxes have moved while they've been shipping, you might end up with a little bit more damage on that. With the, the sticker, they wouldn't have gotten damaged that much, but, you know, not having to apply a, de a big S decal, it's pretty, pretty nice. I don't, I appreciate that. And there are a couple things in the instructions I wanted to go over. Um, but I'll do that after we take a look at R2. So this is actually a really nice scale. There we go. Bring him in here. So really detailed for how small he is. But he's just large enough that they're able to get oh, actually a lot of detail in here. I'm quite impressed with the design. Um, he has some functions. He has got his feet there are not set where they are because you do get a couple accessories. One is his third foot. I'll show you that in a second. So the head moves. The torso moves. Well, I mean, the legs move on the torso, really. Uh, and those are kind of the only functions of the body. Uh, everything else is sort of like an additional thing that you put on. It's technically you know, accessories. So down here, you'll notice there's a spot there, and you pop his leg on, and his legs swing kind of freely so that you're able to achieve the proper angle, and he's able to have his third foot out. Now, you got to make sure you kind of have to get those legs back. There we go. And now he's, I'm sure you knew about that if you saw the, the box art and the instructions, but it's pretty cool. Um, he's large enough that you can have that feature, but he's actually too small to have it retractable um, because of all the, the way the torso is designed. They had to have a lot of different angles to get these this barrel shaped. Like honestly, the design is fantastic. How well they're able to capture his trash can <laughs> body, um, and it's all a bunch of like this part, and those parts. There are a bunch of panels that you build with slopes on them, and you just stick them on to a rectangular uh, chassis, basically. Um, the head dome is built pretty similarly. Each one of these is its own panel, and you're building basically a half of a sphere, like they would as, uh, you know, I'd, I hear that part of the addition to become a actual master builder, you have to build a sphere out of blocks and so it's actually a pretty decent technique uh the they've got all the greebling stuff here and then at the top this is actually a printed uh dish I'm not focusing oh well. a lot of little details here here's the back there's a couple decals a couple stickers you have to put on but not too many all in all, really good details for something this kind of compact. Um, he, there's also a couple more things. So his little, these represent his little side panels that open up. But you have to fully remove them. And then you get his little computer access tool that pops here. And it's designed to look like... That panel is opened and it raises up and then on the other side you get I believe this is like a little grabber at first I thought it was his taser but it seems more like a uh, little grabber um, he has so many tools and little attachments canonically that it's a little hard to actually say which one this is uh due to its location i'm pretty sure it's his little 
grabby hand. So he's got that. This is pretty nice, but in order to, you know, put them on and off, you literally have to pull these completely off to get that panel back on to make it look like it closed. Um, so you don't really see sets like that where they give you accessories that you have to have next to the set that actually go on it. But due to size constraints, this is kind of how they had to go. And then you also have his little periscope, which goes right here. Which you don't really see much in the movies, but it's a feature. It's pretty cute. And that's just one of the things that you have on the side. And so... I have this little little toy R2-D2, and I wanted to just show you kind of a side-by-side -side the detailing on these. They have all, all the bits and bobs that this one has. Um, if you notice, there's a silver band down here below the blue, and here is just blue. So they weren't able to actually put another row of plates down underneath there because I think it just would have made the proportions a little wonky so there's one little thing right there but otherwise most of the top you know pretty decent they even have all the stickers for the, the spots there I don't know if it's accurate to have that in red in the back I'm pretty sure this flashes between red and green um, they got the two dots there, you know, pretty, pretty accurate, except maybe right here they didn't have, I, I'm just nitpicking here, you know, a bunch of different details here and there. Um, chest, very similar, the sides, you have these little greebles here, you have the, uh, I mean, this is more of a rectangle, so it's kind of implied that it's, you know, rounded in the front. But that is sort of a rectangle in the bottom too, so I guess that's fine. Um, all these side grills sort of things. Uh, these things kind of move a little bit. They're only connected by that clip. Let's look at the backs. Side of the legs, they got all those parts too. The back, there's not a lot of detail here. This is pretty yellowed, but they do have these little, I want to say like vents built in there. It's also with decals. You have another little port in the back, more grills on the side. So, all in all, body detail is pretty darn spectacular. It's 10 out of 10 on the design. Um, and then there was a couple things in the instructions that I wanted to show you guys. Um, let's pick this up. So on page eight, so while you're building the beginning of the frame that all these panels go on, I wanted to show you something here. So with this piece right here, this Technic brick, you've got these two, this pins, you know, black pin to pin, you get those there. And then they go into right there. And then when you're building the other side, you're doing basically the exact same thing. Except for some reason, they give you two of these, which is the Technic Axle Pin. And these are the only two you get. And they have you put them right there, which connects into that part, which goes right there, which is the counterpart to the back side. So that side and this side are built exactly the same way, except they put in the black pins on the back and the weird pin and axle piece up here. There's literally zero reason to do that. Because you already have the black pins. They even give you an extra one.
but the only two you use, the only two that come in this set, period, are the two that you put right there. And there's la literally zero reason to have included a separate part when you're literally building the exact same thing on the other side of what you just built. I do not understand this. It makes no sense. For some reason, they did that. I, I do not understand. Um, that just seems like the same thing, but with extra steps. So that was, I was building this. I was like, wait a second, why? Uh, so that really kind of threw me for a little bit there. Um, and then the other one, not the other one, the next one I wanted to look at was when you're doing Darth Malak, you build his stand, and then they have this 2 by 4 black tile. And it's right here. That's the last you'll ever see in the instructions about what to do with that. And so if you weren't aware that the other sets in this line also came with exclusive figures, I mean, what do you do with this? The instruction says nothing about this after that. You just have it sitting in front of Darth Malak on his little pedestal. That is to connect these pedestals to the other pedestals so you can have them lined up in a row, which seems fairly obvious, but they don't say anything about that in the instructions. So it's a little weird. Um, and let's go to page 119. Almost there. Okie dokie. And this, not so much an issue. It's just, we get these smooth sort of pin barrel things. And it's like, I was building this like, hey, I have not seen these in a very, very long time. It's pretty neat that they're using them in here. Um, and that's just so you have no ridges in the center. Uh, these are usually used for like uh, joints and stuff, like pins for barrels and shit. Oops, I said a dirty word. <laughs> and then here, so right now this is building the foot assembly. And you have this little L bracket here, and you sit it in the center, and then it freely slides up and down. You put that in there. And then over here, you see they use these little parts to slot in on either side of it, and it keeps it lined up straight so it doesn't go back and forth. And I was like, you know, that's actually pretty neat. Uh, and then you just attach it to the bottom of the leg with that pin right there. And that's a pretty nice little function. So you don't have to have any ratcheting joints or anything. Saves a lot of space. And uh, and I just wanted to show you guys some of these techniques that they're using. It's like this is very detailed, very nice. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I just want to show you the scale here because this is the uh, 8009 R2 from 2002. And it kind of is that size compared to it. So, you know, you kind of a step up, but still it's that small, cute little, uh, little form. It's really nice. Uh, the next one I'm going to be doing is one that's uh, a, even a step higher, the UCS R2-D2. So stay tuned for that one, and I'll see you guys later.